Lots to come then. It is 10 past two here in the UK. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live and this is the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Let me take you through the grid then ahead of today's race. It's Valtteri Bottas in front on pole position with his teammate Lewis Hamilton alongside him. It's Hulkenberg behind him in third. Max Verstappen's next. Daniel Ricciardo and Lance Stroll make up the third row. Pierre Gasly and Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Then Alex Albon and Lando Norris, the Brit in the McLaren, is 10th. Sebastian Vettel 11th. Carlos Sainz is 12th. Roman Grosjean down in 13th, followed by Esteban Ocon. George Russell, another British driver in a Williams there. Daniel Kvyat in 16th. Kevin Magnussen 17th. Nicholas Latifi in 18th. 19th is Antonio Giovinazzi. And rounding out the field is Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo. Here we go then, we've got cars on their formation lap, working their way, way round these 18 corners of Silverstone, the place where Formula One began back in 1950, heading back towards the grid to take this race start, Jolie. Tires, tires, tires. The big talk of last week, and let's talk about it now. On the formation lap, Max Verstappen, as I said earlier, on the hard tire. Now, last week it was a one-stopper. We've got a softer range of tyres right now, but Verstappen maybe will have an eye on a one-stop, whereas most people are going to have to do a two-stop. We know how it ended last week on a one-stop. It was messy. There were tyre failures. But there's a few drivers outside of the top ten as well who have copied Verstappen's starting tyre. Vettel, Sainz and uh, Grosjean, I think, starting on, a, on, on the hard tyre. Daniel Kvyat as well. So there's a few that might try and make it on a one. It'll be interesting to see. It really will. That's definitely one to watch. The battle between the two Mercedes as well could get very feisty. In fact, it really needs to get feisty if we're going to keep Valtteri Bottas ahead of Lewis Hamilton and keep his championship alive. Lewis comes round then uh, following Valtteri Bottas. The two black Mercedes exiting the final corner, slowly winding their way towards their grid slots. Let's get an update from Jenny Gow. Sun is shining, the wind will buff at these cars, just make them a little more unstable, a little harder to be able to drive, and confirmation on the hard tyres. It is Verstappen in the top ten, and Vettel, Sainz, Kvyat and Raikkonen all choosing the hard tyres, everybody else on the medium. Very good then. The excitement builds. The Alfa Romeo of Kimi Raikkonen, the last car to come round that final corner and take up a position on the grid. We'll wait for the green flag at the back of the grid to signify that everybody's in place as the world watches on. Everybody tense, nervous at this point. I've been in the garages. I can tell you it is a tense time as everybody waits to see what happens. Raikkonen rolls into position. The green flag is waved. The five red lights come on. And they go out and we're racing at Silverstone. It's a good start from Bottas and from Hamilton, neck and neck, but Bottas holds the lead through the first corner. The right-hander of Abbey, Verstappen, up to third place on the hard tyre. We thought he might struggle off the line, but he hasn't. He's got past Nico Hulkenberg. Daniel Ricciardo up the inside of Hulkenberg, challenging for that fourth, but Hulkenberg holds on. It's Hulkenberg from Ricciardo. Now Lance Stroll in the second pink racing point gets up behind his teammate of Hulkenberg, but it's both Mercedes out front. Lewis Hamilton challenging Valtteri Bottas. Bottas with the inside as they go through. Brooklands still in the lead then. It is Bottas from Hamilton, but Hamilton all over the back, Jolian. This could get racy now. Bottas squirming on the throttle out of left field corner. Hamilton putting huge pressure on him down to Cox, but surely not an overtaking chance. And Bottas has just held on on lap one. Unlike Sebastian Vettel, something's happened to him. He's dropped from 11th right to the back of the pack. So Vettel with a poor start. Good start for Verstappen on the hard time. Made the place on Hulkenberg. And Stroll has passed Ricardo as well for fifth. So bad start for Ricardo, great start for Verstappen. Yeah, really good stuff. This is exactly what we needed. We needed Bottas to stay in front. We needed Verstappen to get a great start. And both of those things have happened. It's the two Mercedes building a small gap from Verstappen in third. Then it's back to Nico Hülkenberg in the racing point as uh, Carlos Sainz challenging Charles Leclerc in the red Ferrari. Uh, that's all the way back for 10th place. 
Uh, we still haven't found out what happened to Sebastian Vettel, but he is right at the back of the field. We'll get a replay and call it for you as soon as we can. Leclerc, bad start for him then. So one Ferrari at the back. The other one, Charles Leclerc, lost a couple of positions at the start. Good start for Lando Norris from 10th up to 8th. Albon as well maintains 9th by passing Leclerc, but losing the place to Norris. And Leclerc now full of uh, Carlos Sainz in his mirrors. Sainz having a little look to the inside at Stowe, but nothing doing there. So we've got two black Mercedes out front as we go through lap two. It's Bottas in the lead from Lewis Hamilton. Then it's Max Verstappen. Then we've got the two pink Mercedes, the racing points. It's Hulkenberg followed by Stroll, who's made a place up over Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault. Daniel Ricciardo sixth. Gasly is seventh. Norris is eighth in the McLaren. Daniel, uh, Alex Albon rather ninth. Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari is 10th. His teammate, Sebastian Vettel, has disappeared, dropping nine places right to the back of the pack off the start, and we still haven't yet seen what happened to him. No, he didn't pit, so Vettel's carried on, but it was somewhere through the first sector he, uh, he came into trouble. So Vettel already having a tough weekend, starting outside the top 10 and uh, in the wars early on. He's got a long way to go and he's not a happy man at the moment. But uh, his teammates got a lot to do still from 10th place. Ferrari not having things their own way. And uh, there's going to be a lot of head scratching, I think, for that team. Absolutely. So around about a second is the lead that Valtteri Bottas has over his teammate Lewis Hamilton. Another couple of seconds back to Verstappen as we go into lap three, meaning DRS is available now. That's the rear wing flap that can be opened when you're within one second of the car in front, giving you a slipstream or a speed advantage down the straight. And Hamilton's just nudged within a second of Bottas, seven tenths away. He's still putting big pressure on his finished teammate. There's a bit of a lock up at the loop, turn four. I don't think Hamilton's going to be close enough this time as they come through entry down the Wellington straight, but he pops open the DRS. Long run now down to Brooklyn's corner, and Bottas has just enough of an advantage. So Hamilton not close enough to make a lunge anytime soon, but there's pressure coming. Let's have another look at the race start then. It was a neck and neck start for the two Mercedes as they pulled away. Verstappen, though, we thought he might struggle on the harder tyres to get that grip down, but no, it was a big launch. Uh, he pulled himself up into third place. I think Vettel lost it on his own. He had a big old wobble. Here we go on board with him. He's actually had a good start on the hard tyre, but that won't warm up very quickly. Leclerc, big lock up in turn one, and whoa, oh, whoa, did. big spike of wheel spin coming through turn one. Too much right foot on the throttle pedal, and he's had the tank slapper of all tank slappers in the midst of the melee, right in the midfield. He's almost taken Carlos Sainz out. He's almost taken Esteban Ocon out as well as he comes back the other way on the track, and he spins off onto the right-hand side. So Vettel... Another mistake in a race, all of his own making. Jenny, you got an update on Ferrari. Yeah, just spoken to the team. They say it doesn't look like he's had any damage to the car. So all the tracking that they can see, all the reference points, no damage to that. I have to say, it looked like a sim shun, didn't he? He almost didn't know where he was on the track when he righted himself. Well, he may have no damage, but he was millimetres away from having serious damage as other cars almost collected him. That was, was disastrous enough to find himself all the way back in 19th position, but he was nearly out of this race uh, with cars whizzing past him as he spun out of control. So, disastrous start for Ferrari, particularly for Vettel, but at the front, it's a dream start for Valtteri Bottas, who leads his teammate Lewis Hamilton. Seven tenths of a second is the gap. They're building a nice little cushion behind. A couple of seconds back to Max Verstappen. Let's take you through it then. Lap four we're on of this 70th anniversary Formula One Grand Prix with Bottas out front from Hamilton. Verstappen is third. Nico Hülkenberg and Lance Stroll fourth and fifth. Daniel Ricciardo is sixth. Gasly seventh. Eighth is Lando Norris. Alex Albon is ninth. And the top tens rounded out with Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Carlos Sainz is 11th. Esteban Ocon 12th. Kvyat, Magnussen, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Russell, Sebastian Vettel all the way down in 18th, Kimi Raikkonen is 19th, and the Williams of Nicholas Latifi rounding out the field in 20th. Vettel's made a couple of places up then. He's passed Latifi and Kimi Raikkonen, but still an awfully long way to go back towards the points. The racing points, talking of points, are dropping away in fourth place. Bottas still leading by one second, so Hamilton keeping the pressure on, keeping just about within DRS. He's right on the cusp of it every lap, but so far has just snuck inside that second at the crucial moment. Verstappen's kind of going with them. He's three seconds back from Hamilton, but he's keeping them relatively honest. And then there's a bigger gap back to Hulkenberg, who's got Lance Stroll, his teammate for company at the moment, fourth and fifth. Ricardo at the moment, not able to put the racing points under any pressure. 
Renault have looked good for pace, and Ricardo finished fourth last weekend, so he may well find a bit of pace later on. But uh, right now, not able to pressure Stroll, who's having a good drive up in fifth behind his teammate Nico Hulkenberg, still fourth. Some close battles further down the field as well. Roman Grosjean chasing Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo. And Jenny Gao has news. Yeah, where he shouldn't really be because he started this race in 13th. So ahead, he slipped back into 16th. And just listening across to George Russell and the Williams on his radio, saying that it looked uh, like to him that the rear left was on fire when it came to um, Grosjean's car. So maybe an issue with the brake pads at the back. Yeah, that's not what you want, is it? One driver <laughs> one driver notifying you that another driver's car's on fire. Um, but there we go, it does happen. Brakes do catch fire. It, unusual though that may sound. Uh, they get incredibly hot, up to a thousand degrees centigrade on the brakes. Grosjean's still going, and actually the best way to cool them down is by going quickly, yeah. ironically. There's a, a lot of fast sections in the track, which is where they're coming through now as well, onto the, uh, the hangar straight through Cox, Maggots and Beckett's, and getting a lot of airflow by going fast without using the brakes can cool down the, uh, the brakes, which Russell has identified as a problem for Roman Grosjean. Down in 16th, good start from Kevin Magnussen, his teammate, up in 14th. He's had a tricky weekend so far, but has made a good few places at the start. Here's Bottas. So front left, critical. Also rear left. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, there's a familiar message uh, you may remember from a week ago when it was the front left that let go with just a lap or two to go uh, on Valtteri Bottas's car. That was his engineer telling him that uh, front left, in fact, left front and rear are critical. This is a circuit full of right-hand corners, very high speed. All of the loads, all of the temperature builds in the left-hand side of the car. And we've seen all weekend, Jody, in the tyre temperature uh, and looking after those tyres is going to be critical. And we're on lap six. <laughs> lap six of 52, and Bottas is getting his first critical tyre warning from his engineer. Big blend out of the throttle through Cox. He's still got Hamilton right behind him, just about a second back, so he can't take it too easy, or Hamilton will, will be very eager to make it through, still pressuring the Finn out front. But that is one of the places where you could save the left front a little bit, in the fast corners, in Cox, in Abbey, maybe a bit at Stowe as well, if you dare. And that's what it's all about. We are expecting a two-stopper, particularly for the Mercedes, who start on the medium. Verstappen three seconds back from the race lead. He's actually starting to reel in the two Mercedes out front now. He could yet come into play here. Yeah, the tie you definitely didn't want to be on, really, was that medium. And so many of the drivers and teams deciding to start on it. But it looks like a horrible tyre right now. The sun beating down on the track. And I reckon pit window opens in a couple of laps, lap 10 to 16. We'll see the first of the guys coming into pit. They're going to try and do a stint on two mediums and then a hard to the end if they can. But it's going to be pretty tough. I think they'll want to try and be on the hards if they've got an option all through this race. But they're not allowed. They have to switch to the medium at some point. Albert pits immediately. Alex Albin into the pits from ninth position. Switching from a medium to a hard very early on. He was quite close up behind Lando Norris. So I imagine this could just be an old fashioned undercut, but it locks him squarely into a two stop race then. Albin in, good pit stop from the Red Bull guys, 2.6 seconds. And now he's got to do a good outlap and he can jump ahead of Lando Norris. And they've benefited from seeing what his teammates been able to do on that hard tyre, holding out very well in comparison to the mediums at this point. So an early switch to the hard should let him go much, much longer on this stint. But actually, in these conditions, in these temperatures, a 43.1 degree track temperature at the moment, it may just be the better tyre. And Albin is in a, a, a relatively fast Red Bull. Uh, Verstappen is still closing in slightly on the two Mercedes. I say slightly, it was seven lot, tenths yeah. to Valtteri Bottas on the last lap, four tenths to, to Hamilton. They're all concertinering up in, in the front three. Meanwhile, Nico Hulkenberg is dropping back furthermore, a second slower than Verstappen. And that is where Albin sees the clear space, Red Bull see the clear space, pit the, uh, the tie driver, and now a few quick laps and he can jump a couple of cars potentially that's what Red Bull are hoping well loads to come we're on lap 8 of lap of 52 laps of this uh, Formula 1 70th anniversary Grand Prix you're listening to BBC Radio 5 live with me Mark Priestley Jolian Palmer and Jenny Gao it currently is Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes out front uh, followed by his teammate Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen getting ever closer to those front two in his Red Bull Gasly pits in the Alfa Tauri. Giovinazzi pits from further back as well, but let's see. Alfa Tauri then responding to Red Bull. Gasly was running seventh. Good pit stop from them as well, 2.4 seconds. 
Gasly switches from a medium to a hard, exactly the same as Albon, and rejoins well ahead of Alex Albon. So Albon not doing enough on the outlap to get ahead of Pierre Gasly. And we're, gonna, we're seeing some early pit stops, aren't we? This is definitely going to be a two-stop for these guys. It's great stuff. This is exactly what we wanted. And actually, making Max Verstappen's decision to qualify and start the race on that hard tyre looking ever better. Jenny Gao. Yeah, it's interesting. All the people that have come in and put on the hard tyres, their teammates are already running the hard, so the teams can see the difference in the tyres that they're running. And just on Albon coming in in that Red Bull, he was told by his team, whatever Norris does in that McLaren, Lando Norris, the British driver, do the opposite. So that's what they've done. OK, well, Valtteri Bottas has just had a message from his engineer saying the left rear is now hotter than the left front. That's about getting on the throttle a little bit too early, squirming up the rears out of some of these exits of corners. He needs to really look out for those. He's on the medium tyre, which will not go as long, of course, as the harder tyre of Max Verstappen behind. So balancing the gap at the moment, Bottas with 1.2 seconds over his teammate Hamilton, keeping him just outside that crucial DRS zone. And Verstappen, another couple of seconds back. All the messages we're getting are from Bottas out front, his left front, now his left rear looking... Uh more and more critical what about lewis hamilton still just a second behind in the dirty air which normally means you slide more you can damage your tires more in that position but if hamilton can just keep his tires in better condition then bottas bottas will have to pit earlier and hamilton can go longer and give himself a better chance later on in the grand prix still only 1.3 seconds back Verstappen now only another 1.3 seconds back on hamilton still lapping quicker than the two mercedes ahead on that hard tire he started on they're all bunching up even more, and right now Bottas is coming under more and more pressure. The gap just one second and just about to come underneath the second. Well, if you thought two races at the same venue just seven days apart might just be a copy and paste of the one before, it definitely is not that. Softer tyres this weekend for the 70th anniversary Grand Prix are already spicing up the show, and there's a huge gap between the front three of Bottas, Hamilton and Verstappen, and then back to the racing points of Hülkenberg. Nico, we are still plan A and target lap. We're on target. Solid job from Hülkenberg, and the team just letting him know, yep, all good, we're on plan A, just keep to the target. That's what they planned pre-race in the strategy meetings. And this is probably what Racing Point we're expecting as well. Verstappen generally has been too quick for the, for the midfielders. He's been the, the driver to take the fight to the Mercedes. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Just two and a half seconds off the race lead and just over a second now away from Lewis Hamilton. The top three are pretty much running together. Then there's a big gap back to Nico Hülkenberg. But the team's saying Hülkenberg doing very well. And he is doing very well. Remember, it's his first race for eight months. He's running in fourth. Amazing stuff. As Magnussen pits in the Haas, so does Latifi in the Williams. Uh, the pit window just opening up now for those who started the race on the medium tyre. Uh, early, but not too early. So Haas, uh, the Haas of Magnussen switching to the hard tyres and away he goes out of the pit lane. Albon's very close to the back of Pierre Gasly now. Remember, these are the two that pitted very early. Albon from ninth, Gasly from seventh, covered him off. They've now caught the back of the pack. They caught them pretty quickly. And the Gasly is coming up behind Kimi Raikkonen, who qualified last and is now up in 14th by virtue of others pitting and Albon's very close with the DRS open down towards Brooklands. He's really pressuring the man in the Red Bull B team, effectively, Pierre Gasly. Bit of a needle between these two. Albon replaced Gasly at Red Bull. He's now in that Red Bull car that you can hear now, heading up to Cops Corner. But the man he replaced is in the B team ahead. Interesting psychological battle as well as the one on track. Uh, I'm really interested to see what will happen with Max Verstappen here because he's hanging on a lot better than I thought he would to the Mercedes. We've become used to the Mercedes disappearing into the distance, but the faster tyre today is clearly the hard tyre that Max Verstappen qualified on and started the race on. The two Mercedes out front on the softer tyre that's just not performing, uh, and that is Gasly getting past Raikkonen. So Gasly in the Alpha Tauri overtaking Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo, but here he comes back again. Kimi locking up a break. No, not quite able to hold on. So Gasly passed the Alfa Romeo of Kimi Raikkonen. That battles for 14th place. Very close, the two of them through club corner. Albon went walkies through Stowe. He went in way too hot and ran wide and uh, lost a bit of time there as well. Here's Verstappen. Max, I think we're a little bit close for tyres at this stage. I think just pull back. This is the only chance of being close to the Mercedes and not just sitting behind like a grandma. 
<laughs> Max Verstappen's engineer giving him the, dri the message that no driver wants to hear. Could you just back off a little bit? We're going a bit too fast for these tyres. He's going fast because he's just broken into the DRS zone of Lewis Hamilton. Less than a second now, the gap from Hamilton to Verstappen. Verstappen sees his opportunity, his engineer telling him, you're gonna, you're gonna use up your tires too quickly at this pace. And trust Verstappen to have the funky radio messages <laughs> right now. This is it, he's fighting with the Mercedes on merit for the lead of the race. He's in third, but he's within a second of Lewis Hamilton, who's barely a second behind Valtteri Bottas. It's the two Mercedes, oh sorry, I thought it was the two Mercedes up front going for it, it's not, we're on board with Albon. It's a replay of Albon getting it very wrong yeah. at Stowe on that last lap where he went wide. He had a big old oversteer, he crashed there. Did. in practice last week and uh, this time he caught the moment but lost a bit of time okay so we're on lap 12 of 52 it's Bottas from Hamilton from Verstappen Jenny Gow what do you know yeah, just looking at those two Mercedes cars and those tyres blistering and bubbling away under the heat and the pressure of driving round. We're on lap 12 and you can see the deep gouges in Valtteri Bottas's front right tyre as he just goes around the Silverstone circuit and Verstappen catching again so close now, Verstappen right up underneath the rear wing of Lewis Hamilton, and this is a genuine battle for under genuine pace, something we didn't necessarily see, think we'd see this season. Verstappen all over the back, looking for second place in this Grand Prix. Hamilton's on the soft tyre, or the medium tyre, uh, Verstappen on the harder tyre, a definite pace difference between the two. He's catching very quickly through Beckett's corner, here's Hamilton. There is a finish. The rears are finished, was that message to Lewis Hamilton, uh, from Lewis Hamilton to his engineer. He's talking about the tyres, of course. He's used up all the grip they have. They're overheating. They're not delivering the grip, whereas right behind him, Max Verstappen on the harder tyre, the more durable tyre. In theory, the, the slower tyre, but in these conditions, holding onto that grip for longer. And now Lewis Hamilton under some serious pressure from the Red Bull of Max Verstappen behind. Hamilton's dropping back then from Bottas. 1.8 seconds Bottas leads by. A shot looking back from Lewis Hamilton sees Max Verstappen just seven tenths back through the, the first couple of corners. Now he breaks for turn three. The rear tyres of Hamilton's look manky. Big, deep lines of blisters forming in the middle part of it. The inside groove on the left rear looks horrible as well. And Verstappen might have a chance here. Wellington straight. The Red Bull man will pop open the DRS. As we see Carlos Sainz pit from inside the top 10. What's Verstappen doing though down towards Brooklands? I don't think he's going to make it through on this lap. That was Norris actually uh, in the pit lane for the McLaren. He's ditching his medium tyres, going onto the hards as well. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting battle. And what's most interesting about this is that the two Mercedes are going to have to pit before the Red Bull. Here goes Verstappen, has a look, has a look down the inside of Lewis Hamilton. Didn't make it move and make it stick on this occasion, but he has got pace over the two Mercedes. They are going to have to pit very soon for new tyres, and that is going to unleash Verstappen. Cops corner was never going to be the one, though, for Verstappen. <laughs> this might be a better chance. He squirms on the throttle exit of Beckett's, but again, pop open the DRS on the hangar straight now, down towards Stowe. Will Hamilton have to defend here? On board with Max Verstappen. Hamilton just about arms reach away. Verstappen frustrated now. The Mercedes struggling, and Bottas from the race lead pit. And this is the battle we want to see. So Bottas out of the way. Lewis Hamilton then leads this race, but in a car that has no grip left on it. It's Bottas who is leading, who gets the preferred strategy call from his team at Mercedes. That's the way they work it. Hamilton now under major pressure. Verstappen right behind with DRS on tyres that are faster and more durable than the Mercedes. What can happen here? Bottas exits the pit lane. 2.7 second pit stop for Bottas, that's not bad for Mercedes, but now Hamilton still with Verstappen right behind him, six tenths away as they go through Adrian again onto the Wellington straight, Hamilton under big pressure, Verstappen DRS open again down towards Brooklands, can't quite make the move though, Hamilton turns into the left-hander still just ahead on those rear tyres that are not looking good and Hamilton's not happy with how they're performing either, but Verstappen at the moment the aggressive young Dutchman not able to even get close enough quite for a lunge. Brilliant stuff. Did you ever think in 2020 we'd be saying that the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton is holding up the Red Bull of Max Verstappen? But that is the case. I would expect Lewis to pit very, very soon, either this lap. I can't imagine his team are going to let him do too much of a different strategy to his teammate of Bottas, and that's going to unleash Verstappen into the lead. He's got to pit this lap, Hamilton. He's just losing so much time. Verstappen on the hard tyres is showing what is capable with tyres that are working.
Bottas has pitted and rejoined in sixth place, and Hamilton is told to pit this lap. So coming through Stowe, Hamilton peels off on the exit, down towards the pit lane entry, and Verstappen continues into the race lead. In he goes then, Hamilton into the pits, around about 19 seconds or so, not a huge time loss for a pit stop here, and that's partly because you miss out the last three corners by going into the pit lane around this Silverstone circuit. Verstappen, though, continues on his hard tyres. He's now leading this race. Hamilton in the pits, a decent stop by that Mercedes team. 2.5 seconds to change all four tyres. That's impressive stuff. But it now means Verstappen leads. Hülkenberg is second. Lance Stroll is in third place. Valtteri Bottas fourth. Hamilton exits and comes out in sixth place behind Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari. Carlos Sainz is seventh. Daniel Ricciardo eighth. Ocon is ninth. Danny Kvyat rounding out the top ten as Daniel Ricciardo, in fact, pits. Roman Grosjean up to 11th, uh, yet to pit. Vettel, Sebastian Vettel in 12th, Norris in 13th, Gasly 14th. Then it's Albon, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Russell, Magnussen and the Williams of Latifi. So Hamilton coming back a long way uh, behind Valtteri Bottas just for one extra lap. You're listening to a replay of Alex Albon. He's about to go all the way around the outside That's close. of Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo through Cops Corner. He's shown some bravery in his time with Red Bull in overtaking, <laughs> that is for sure. Sometimes, occasionally, too much. And that one was right on the limit as well. The two cars just about an inch away from each other. Uh, about 180 mile an hour through there in race trim. So uh, Albon's made it through, up into 15th. Still behind Pierre Gasly. And now Lando Norris has pitted and has come out ahead of uh, Gasly and Albon as well. So it's worked out nicely for Norris. So we've got the man with the fastest lap, Valtteri Bottas, in his black Mercedes. His teammate Lewis Hamilton now up into fifth place behind him. So it's the two black Mercedes chasing the two pink Mercedes, the two racing points. Pretty much a copy of last year's Mercedes, those racing points. And Stroll at that moment, in fact, moves up into second place as Nico Hülkenberg pits from second, moving Bottas into third, Hamilton into fourth. So it's Verstappen leading, yet to pit. Hamilton made his way past Charles Leclerc. Uh, in that Ferrari, underpowered Ferrari, definitely compared to the Mercedes. So that was an easy one on the way towards Stowe from Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen leads then from Hülkenberg, Stroll, Bottas, Hamilton and Leclerc. Jenny. Yeah, these hard tyres, you can get about 20 laps out of them. We'll see exactly how much you can get out of them because the drivers who started on, like Max Verstappen, are looking to get 20, 25 laps out of them if they can, and we're on lap 16 right now. But anyone who started on the mediums is going to have to come back in again and get another tyre on. They reckon two hard tyres after the medium is the quickest way to do it, and about two stints of 22 laps each. Yeah, I suspect, you know, people are going to be so nervous after what happened last week with the tyres letting go and, and almost ruining, well, it did ruin the race for Bottas, almost ruining the entire day for Mercedes. Um, people are going to be nervous. We've already seen the black lines forming on those medium tyres just before the stops on the Mercedes. They can't afford to take too much risk in tyres, which is going to, to favour that two-stop race. I just wonder if anybody could Verstappen eke out a, a one-stop. I think it's a huge gamble, but if he's going to beat the Mercedes, perhaps that's what he's got to do. Yeah, he's on the hard tyre, so he's only got the medium as, a, as an option to go to. Valtteri Bottas crosses the line in third place, behind Stroll in second and Verstappen in first on lap 17 of 52. And Bottas does the fastest lap of the race. 13 seconds now behind Verstappen. So if Verstappen is going to try and do a one-stop, he's got a 13-second buffer, effectively, because they'll all have to pit again. So. It could be a way that Red Bull, they're not a, normally adverse to a different strategy, a bit of a gamble, roll of the dice. It could be the way that Verstappen could bring himself back into the mix. I think what they'll be hoping for at Red Bull right now is someone to have a big smash and a safety car to come out, because that's the way they want to play this. Maybe in a few laps time, not quite yet, but that's how they want to win this race, I think. Uh, I think they're yeah, absolutely... Okay. Just uh, managing the left front a little. Understood. We're happy with the tyre appearance as well. Excellent job. OK, sorry, that was Max Verstappen and his engineer discussing tyres. So all very calm, it sounds, at the front. Verstappen just asking about the condition of his tyres. The engineer saying, we're good, we're happy. So Verstappen leads with an 11-second advantage over Lance Stroll. Uh, Lance Stroll in the racing point yet to pit. So the de facto second place would be Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes. He has made a stop from medium uh, onto the hard tyres, and he's about 11 or 12 seconds back. 
Verstappen, though, looking comfortable. And it's going to be really interesting to see how the strategy plays out. This is something that these softer tyres, bringing a different range of tyres this week, has really changed the game. Smart move from Sebastian Vettel around the outside of Roman Grosjean at Brooklands. It was a couple of corners in the making, that one. And now Lando Norris, who has pitted, sweeps around the outside of the Frenchman as well, down at Stowe Corner. Nice move from Norris as well in 12th position. And now Grosjean, having lost a couple of places, peels off right into the pits as well for his pit stop. Just behind Norris, Pierre Gasly still ahead of Alex Albon. The two early pitters from the midfield not able to make progress, not able to make the progress they were hoping for because they came out in traffic. They had clear air for just a couple of laps, but then struggled in the traffic, and Norris, who stayed out, benefited from that. Still staying out, as you say, Verstappen and Stroll haven't pitted in first and second. Leclerc in fifth on the medium tyres, hasn't pitted either. And Carlos Sainz in sixth, started on the hards, he still hasn't pitted. Stroll on the way in, being called into the pits, which is going to release Valtteri Bottas. He's a couple of seconds behind Stroll at the moment, probably suffering a little bit in the dirty air behind that racing point. The racing point, though, about to disappear into the pit lane for his tyre change, meaning Bottas and Hamilton, currently third and fourth, will be released to attack Verstappen out front. It needs to happen because the gap to, to Verstappen to Bottas is stabilised slightly in the last few laps. Verstappen just does his personal best lap of the race, so 1 minute 31.7, which has matched what Valtteri Bottas did on the last lap as well. It is now, oh, it's still 13 seconds, the gap. Stroll pits at the perfect time for Mercedes, though, because Bottas and then Lewis Hamilton were just starting to catch the Canadian for second place. Stroll dives in the pits, mediums for hards, the same as pretty much everyone else, and he's back on his way. Absolutely. Uh, let's give you a rundown then. It is 19 laps into this 52-lap race as uh, Charles Leclerc pits for exactly the same, a set of hard tyres. Currently leading, though, it's Verstappen from Bottas, Hamilton, Sainz, Hulkenberg and Stroll in the two pink racing points of fifth and sixth. Ocon, Kvyat, Ricardo is ninth, Charles Leclerc currently in the pits is uh, 11th, just behind his teammate Sebastian Vettel. Uh, the Brit, Lando Norris, is currently 11th, uh, Gasly is 13th, Albon 14th, Kimi Raikkonen and Giovinazzi 15th and 16th, Russell, Magnussen, Latifi and Grosjean. Albon very close behind Gasly this time, the Red Bull man still battling with the Alpha Tari man, that's for 13th and Charles Leclerc has just rejoined ahead of them, but now Gasly defends on the way down to Brooklyn, Albon has the outside line in the Red Bull, can he break later? He tries, but Gasly just ushers him wide and will not cede the place. Good defence from Gasly, very elbows out. And Albon frustrated, still stuck behind the Alpha Tauri, the Red Bull B team, and he can't pass Gasly. It's costing him a lot of time in the same car as Verstappen, who leads the race. Albon's had a pit stop, but he's down in 14th. Great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. They were centimetres apart, no more. And this is a really interesting battle that's going to run on for another few corners at least. Uh, Gasly, a man that's really showing well at the moment, a man full of confidence, had some good results and some good showings over the last couple of races, a man that some people are even talking about a possibility of coming back into that Red Bull team. Leclerc very close behind Norris, has a little jink to the inside at Stoke Corner as well, the man that's just pitted, fresh set of hard tyres, and he's got good pace in that car. So those that went longer into the race, it's paid off for them. The early pitters, Gasly and Albon, they ended up dropping back in all of this, and they're on the worst tyres right now with longer to go. Less chance of a, well, no chance of a one-stop, but even a two-stop now is going to be harder work for them on the tyres. Leclerc super close behind Norris, through turns one and two, into turn three, the tight right-hander of Village, and now it goes for the inside of the loop, locks it up the left front. Really smart move from Leclerc, but Norris will get the cut back. That is great stuff, locking up wheel to wheel still as they come onto the straight. DRS actually wide open for Leclerc because he went through the detection point behind. Norris has pulls out to the right hand side, can't get by. Still Leclerc holds on as they come through the right hander of Luffield. That's done then for Leclerc, really good move, super aggressive. And he lined it up from turn three. Didn't try and pull it right, which you would normally do to open up the line for turn four, the loop, the tight left-hander. He just sent it up the inside, locked up the left front and made it through. Norris tried to switch back. They were side by side for a bit, but Leclerc still had the DRS because he was within a second of Norris at the detection point. 
and uh, and he made it through. The slightly fresher tyres on the Ferrari and Leclerc having another good race here. Fascinating out front that Bottas not able to eat into that gap to Verstappen. So both on the same tyre, but Bottas and Hamilton both on much fresher hard tyres. Verstappen still with a 13 and a half second gap out front. If Mercedes have got any hope of winning this race, they need to start eating into that quickly. Personal best lap of the race as well for Max Verstappen. Lap 21 of 52. We're approaching the halfway point. Verstappen still leading but hasn't pitted from both Bottas and Hamilton. And actually the gap now just goes out to 14 seconds. So Verstappen doing everything right. Bottas still three seconds ahead of Hamilton. So the two Mercedes clearly just managing their pace right now. They're under no threat from behind. Fourth place is Carlos Sainz. He hasn't pitted. And he's got Nico Hülkenberg still having a good race in fifth but has pitted right behind Sainz. So there's a little battle forming here for fourth. And behind Hulkenberg, we've got Stroll, Ocon, Ricardo, Vettel, who hasn't pitted and had a spin on the first lap, and Charles Leclerc, who's just made that move past Norris to get into the top 10. So with 21 laps gone of 52 for the entire race, Max Verstappen leads and is opening out a gap. Verstappen is the real threat here if he's one stopping. And that is Lewis Hamilton's engineer telling him exactly what I was about to say. Verstappen is a threat because he's pulling out a gap over the two Mercedes, still increasing. It's at 40, it's almost at 15 seconds. If he can get that to around about 19.20, he's got a pit stop in the back. Penny drop moment for uh, Mercedes, hang on. Don't worry about Valtteri. Verstappen can win this if he's one stopping. Starting on the hard tyres, it might have always been an option for him. I'm surprised Mercedes weren't contemplating that before. The gap's now up to 15 seconds. Bottas is going very slowly at the moment, and Verstappen's becoming a real threat in this race. This is the sound of a replay of Alex Albon. Not sure whether to go inside or outside of Pierre Gasly into Brooklyn. Still the Red Bull man fighting with the Alpha Tauri. And in the end, Albon's going to go right around the outside at Luffield. He does it. Nice move, which he completed on the run down to Cops. So finally, Albon passes Gasly for 12th position. Great racing between the two. Finally, he's got that done. Uh, let's see. Kevin Magnussen and Nicholas Latifi. So that's the Haas and the Williams, both under investigation. The FIA have just announced uh, for a turn 15 incident. One past the other off the track. And as they're 18th and 20th, I can imagine it's Latifi who maybe passed Kevin Magnussen. OK, Jenny Previous Gale. form might say it was the other way around, though. Sorry, Jenny. Yeah, just having a look at uh, the field, Team Radio. <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. It's all good. It's all good, says uh, it's all good, says Verstappen. My tires feel good, mate. It's all good, he says. From the front of the race after 22 laps, he's still on the hard tyre, which he started on. It's worth noting, Ocon and Ricardo, the Renault drivers, they're on the hard tyre now. It's the only hard tyre that Renault have got at the moment, so they're going to have to change onto a medium, which is not the tyre they want to be on when they come in for a pit stop. And they're going to have to come in for a pit stop at one point, you would imagine. They, uh, they pitted quite early, so Renault's strategy not going so well at the moment. Sainz pits out of fourth place, which unleashes Hülkenberg, who was right up behind the Spaniard, now back up into the fourth place he's held since the start of the race. And Bottas is now 16 seconds away from Verstappen. He lost a second on the last lap. Verstappen's just gapping the two Mercedes right now. They're aware that Verstappen's a threat. He's likely trying a one-stopper now. We're approaching the half distance and he hasn't pitted. When he does pit, he'll have to go for the medium tyres. Oh, no, very slow stop for McLaren. And Sainz almost released into the Renault of Ocon as well. And that's going to be very costly for Carlos Sainz. Yeah, difficult for the guys down at McLaren there. Not entirely sure what happened, but they had to release him and then stop him. Uh, before allowing him to leave the pit lane. So difficult times at McLaren, but out front, Verstappen is having a very good race. This is a strategy that was triggered on Saturday afternoon when they chose to qualify in Q2 on the harder tyre when everybody around them chose to use the medium, the softer tyre. Uh, let's have a quick... This is the replay of uh, Carlos Sainz's pit stop. It was a reasonably slow pit stop anyway. I think the man on the button held. Yeah, they held the car for too long. Then they released him as the Renault came past and had to stop him again. It was a mess. Chaos down at McLaren. Jenny Gale. Yeah, they've had this so many times this season. They've changed the operation structure around their pit stops. They've upgraded to a system that all the other teams have. The top teams taking them a little while to get their heads around it. They did OK last time out, but clearly another blunder for them. They'll be very disappointed. 
OK, out front, we've got Verstappen almost 17 seconds ahead of Bottas. He needs around 19, maybe 20 seconds to get a pit stop in the bag. But then, of course, he has to switch if he's going to try a one-stopper to the medium tyre. Lap 24 of 52, so we are approaching that half distance. We've got a really interesting situation coming because Bottas doesn't seem to have any pace in the car. Lewis Hamilton now in third. It's just starting to nibble away at that gap. Two and a half seconds, the, the gap between the two Mercedes. Second at the moment is Valtteri Bottas. Third is Lewis Hamilton. They're both falling away from Max Verstappen at the front of the Grand Prix. And with every passing lap, Verstappen looks like he's in a better chance. Here's Hamilton. That's the right front. Blister right front, says Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes again, very hard on their tyres, and they're probably having to nurse their tyres right now. Bottas on the last lap was seven tenths slower than Max Verstappen, and just looking at the right front of Lewis Hamilton's uh, car, it looks horrible. It's just the blisters just literally opened up before our very eyes as we were on board with him, and it looks really bad. We saw them suffering more than others last week. I mean, could, Jodin, this be anything to do with the, the DAS system, the dual-axis steering system, which allows them to play with the toe settings of the car? I can't imagine they've been using it at this stage in the race. It's normally one of those things that happens under safety car or maybe on the laps of the grid. But it seems like the Mercedes, uniquely, at this point, really, really hard on these tyres. They're very quick in the fast corners, and that's where you put most of the load through the, the front tyres. I don't think it's anything to do with the DAS. We've barely seen the DAS used, to be honest. It was a big talking point in pre-season. I can't really remember seeing it used this season once we've, once we've got going. Mainly, it's, it's used as a tyre warming tool under safety car. We've not had a safety car, and we've got nice 26 and a half degree temperature out there. So, can't believe that's an issue for them right now. But, with that radio message, seeing Hamilton's tyres, this is looking better and better for Max Verstappen. To one of the engineers before this session, they were saying you don't get much warning about these tyres failing. Yes, we can see the blistering. We saw that last weekend before those tyres let go. But in the car, on the data sheets, you don't get much. Just a few vibrations which feel a bit different from usual. And then it's gone. Got a band in the middle of my tyre. That's Hamilton talking about that blister. It's looking more and more worrying. Whilst we keep an eye on that, let's get an update in the rugby league. Dave Woods is at Headingley. Well, it's full time here in the second game. Hole 8, Salford 54. Hole threatening to make a game of it in the 50th minute when they got it back to 18-28. But I then had to, to, to steal a metaphor. I think their tyres failed here. Salford turned on the afterburners. Absolutely terrific after that. They scored five tries in the last 20 minutes, Salford, and they've beaten Hull by 54 points to 18. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, back at Silverstone, we are 26 laps into a 52-lap 70th anniversary Grand Prix, and it's currently not any of the two Mercedes, as you might imagine, but Max Verstappen leading out front with an 18-and-a-half-second gap over Valtteri Bottas. Red Bull mechanics starting to look a little bit twitchy in the garage. Pierre Gasly in the Alfa Tauri is pitted for the second time this afternoon, so... Get, uh, Verstappen hasn't pitted once yet, nor is Kimi Raikkonen for what that's worth down in 14th. Those tyres are lasting well, both on the hards, and Verstappen has just done his personal best lap of the race. One second quicker than Bottas, one and a half seconds quicker than Lewis Hamilton. The gap from Verstappen to Bottas is now 18 and a half seconds, and Hamilton is now five seconds away from Bottas. Verstappen's almost got a free pit stop to emerge in the lead of the race. And even if he does that, they could go one stop. They could stick the medium tyre on. It's a long stint then on the medium tyre. That would be a big gamble. But it just looks like the Red Bull's quicker. They could even revert to a two stop and still have the pace to beat the Mercedes. Yeah, the Mercedes are going to have to stop again as well because of the, the condition of their tyres. They're not good on their tyres. And here come the Red Bull mechanics out into the pit lane. Max Verstappen. And it is mediums. It's mediums going on. So they have the option at least of trying to make it to the end of the race. Verstappen in the pit lane then, rolling down, pulls into his pit stop area. The boys and girls at Red Bull are ready. Let's see how quick the stop is. Not perfect, but I'll tell you what, it wasn't bad. 3.2 seconds is the stop for Verstappen. The medium tyres go on. He pulls out and along the pit lane at a reasonably slow pit lane speed limit here at Silverstone. And he's coming out alongside Valtteri Bottas. Bottas just a couple of car lengths in front of Verstappen takes the lead of this race back but Max Verstappen on much fresher quicker potentially 
medium tyres. He might have a go straight away here as he accelerates out of the loop. Now opens the DRS down the Wellington straight. Bottas for the race lead now goes very defensive to the inside, but Verstappen dives up the inside regardless. The two still running side by side through Brooklands. Bottas holding the outside, and Verstappen goes all the way around the outside of Loughfield. Surely he's not going to make that stick. He does by miles. The Red Bull car with a lot of pace. The guys in the garage applaud him. He's back in the lead immediately. Brilliant, brilliant stuff from Verstappen. And that was aggression. That's exactly what we've come to expect from Max Verstappen. It's what we need to see from Valtteri Bottas. Of course, he's on tyres that are much more worn than Verstappen. But Verstappen retakes the lead of the race and already a second ahead of the struggling Valtteri Bottas. The two Mercedes, unusually, really not working well on these tyres in these conditions. Jenny Gow. Yeah, the magic number was 27 for Verstappen. They knew he had to get to lap 27 to have any chance of making a one-stop last. They wanted to hold on for as long as possible, just in case there was a safety car. If a safety car had happened, they could have got about 10 seconds free, half the time it takes to come in and pit under a safety car. Wasn't to happen, so they've pitted him now. He can, I say he can, get all the way to the end of this race on those medium tyres. He's going to have to nurse them a little bit, but he wants to be out in the front of the race to do that, and that's where he is. He won't, he won't need to go to the end now if Mercedes pits again as well which we're confident they have to the hard tyre worked nicely for Verstappen the medium tyre he's now on didn't work nicely for anyone in the early stages so he's still got to manage it he must have less pressure in his tyres or something Hamilton saying he must have less pressure in his tyres or something. There's minimum pressures that everyone has to uh, to keep to. And Hamilton basically saying they must be cheating to be doing this. Well, those minimum pressures he's talking about have gone up under the orders of Pirelli after what happened last week. So the tyres failed towards the end of the race last week. One of the responses to that is by is Pirelli mandating a higher minimum tyre pressure. And Lewis just confused at the pace of that Red Bull. But you know what? Mercedes are struggling awfully. Nico Hülkenberg in the racing point is going one one second a lap quicker than both Bottas and Hamilton. He's only 10 seconds back from the two Mercedes. He's bringing Lance Stroll with him. Leclerc's not far behind either. Norris is now in a fight with uh, Alex Albon. They're all coming back to the Mercedes. Mercedes are struggling really, really badly out there today. Well, if you've just tuned in, you are 28 laps into a 52-lap race here on BBC Radio 5 Live. It's Mark Priestley, Jolian Palmer and Jenny Gow taking you through the 70th anniversary Formula One Grand Prix. And it is an absolute classic, fitting of the celebration that it is. It's not a dominant display by Mercedes by any means. The Mercedes struggling on tyres this week, and it's Max Verstappen in the Red Bull who leads the race after the first round of pit stops have shaken out. Albon right on the back of Lando Norris. This is a battle for seventh place. Albon pitted very early. His teammates in command of the race now, which no one expected before. The dominant Mercedes are really on the back foot. Verstappen leads, and uh, it was Kevin Magnussen that got a penalty, not Nicholas Latifi, for going wide on the exit of Stowe Corner. Went wide off the track, rejoined quite uh, aggressively in typical <laughs> Kevin Magnussen fashion. And, uh, and that's a five-second penalty then for Kevin Magnussen, who's running last, the TP running second last, 19th and 20th, very close to taking each other out. Yeah, let's take you through where the Brits are then. Lewis Hamilton currently in third place, behind his teammate Valtteri Bottas in second and Verstappen out front. At the, in the gap that we didn't like, we spoke about it this morning. I'll hang in there, but you know that you've messed up. Well, that is an interesting message from uh, Sebastian Vettel. I'll run through the British drivers in a moment, but Sebastian Vettel questioning his team's strategy there and things at Ferrari, and particularly with Vettel, not happy right now. Well, do you reckon the team got onto Vettel after he spun on the first lap telling him that he'd messed up? There's a really <laughs> nasty relationship going on there. Yeah. Albon, lovely pass around the outside of Lando Norris at Cops Corner. He's making a few of them today, and he's made another one up into seventh place. So as we head on to lap 30, the full order is Max Verstappen leading, looking very good, ahead of Bottas and Hamilton. Hülkenberg and Stroll, the two racing points, now equidistant, really, not catching any more. The two Mercedes have picked up their pace. Then it's Leclerc, sixth, who's just done fastest lap, ahead of Alex Albon, who's just passed Lando Norris for seventh place. Norris dives into the pits from eighth. Ocon, ninth. Kvyat, tenth. Ricardo, Sainz. Vettel, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Gasly, Raikkonen, Russell, and then Latifi and Magnussen, who've been having a bit of a ding-dong at the back. 
Yeah, so battles up and down the field then. And uh, as you said, Alex Albon, the Thai British driver, might making his way past uh, the fully British driver of Lando Norris in the McLaren. Uh, Albon up to seventh then as uh, uh, Norris pulls into the pit lane for his pit stop from mediums onto hard tyres. Not a fantastic goes. stop, 3.3 seconds. Sainz had a really poor stop. McLaren's pit stops, well, they're not like they were in your day, Mark. <laughs> the, the guys in the pit lane in between uh, Sainz's stop and Norris's stop were having some seriously detailed inspections of the equipment. Uh, so I don't know if they got a problem down there, but yeah, 3.3 seconds. It may sound fast, but when you're competing at the very front of Formula One, you need to be in the very low two seconds. It is a good stop for changing four wheels and tyres. Right, in the midfield, we've got a decent battle here, led at the moment by Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, forget the tyre management, and as fast as you can within the limits of the tyre, obviously. Well, that, so basically, we're just going to fully send it. <laughs> uh, that's a message a driver likes to hear. His man, that's his engineer telling Verstappen, we're going to go for it, and that means he's switching to a two-stop race, doesn't it? Precisely. Two seconds, the gap to Valtteri Bottas. Into the pits comes Nico Hülkenberg then, who was closing the gap to the two Mercedes, and now he pits out of fourth place. And Verstappen, then they are going to a two-stop. Most people are on a... Pretty much everyone is on a conventional two-stop, and many have pitted already. Esteban Ocon has just put a move on Daniel Kvyat for eighth place now, and Alex Albon pits as well, so they're all about to shuffle up another position. Albon switches to another set of new hard tyres, and that'll see him, he hopes, to the end of the Grand Prix. 21 laps to go. Yeah, that battle between the two Renaults, so Ocon, Kvyat, Ricardo, and Sainz, really close. They're all nose to tail, four cars battling it out in the midfield. We'll keep an eye on that one, but out front it's Verstappen, just been given the hurry up by his teammate to go for it. And we got a yellow flag as one of the Renaults, that is uh, Daniel Ricciardo, has gone off the circuit. He's back on again and continues running. But that battle I was just telling you about, perhaps a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah, they were all very, very tight around Daniel Kvyat, who's ahead of Esteban Ocon now. And uh, they're all up in seventh place now after Albon's pitted. Norris and Gasly also pitted. And Ricardo has just lost out heavily. He's already made two pit stops, and then he was pointing the wrong way down at turn three. So we'll wait for a replay on that. But that's bad news for Renault, who are actually, they're not having a great Grand Prix here. Much better last weekend. Ricardo finished fourth. Now he's in the wars, and he's down in 12th. And here's the replay. We'll take you through it. Daniel Ricardo then chasing Kvyat. Is he on his own at this point? So Kvyat goes down the inside of Esteban Ocon makes a nice clean move down at turn three and we've got someone on the outside of Ricardo Sainz. and Ricardo I think looped it on his own though just trying to get on the throttle too soon it's Carlos Sainz tries to go around the outside of Ricardo and Ricardo just loses it on his own Did. too aggressive on the throttle a little bit like Sebastian Vettel on lap one on the hard tires and that's uh, not a great mistake there from Daniel Ricardo Right, well, interest all over the place, but out front, Max Verstappen has responded to his engineer's call for the hurry-up by putting in the fastest lap of the race. He leads from Valtteri Bottas, the gap 2.2 seconds, more or less remaining relatively stable at this point. Hamilton is then four seconds back from his teammate Bottas, and then it's the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. An enormous 14 seconds back from the leader. Stroll's pitted as well then, so both racing points pitted from what was fourth and fifth. It unleashes... Charles Leclerc up to fourth, so racing points now fifth and sixth behind the Monegasque driver, who's been going really quickly on this stint. Mercedes getting ready, you can hear them trotting down the pit lane, getting ready Verstappen for one of their well. drivers. Verstappen in the pit lane and Bottas together, both pulling in at exactly the same moment. This is going to be a race between the pit crews. Verstappen's team further down the pit lane here at Silverstone in a slightly shuffled order to normal. They both pull in, Bottas leaves, Verstappen leads, Verstappen will remain in front just that worked out nicely for Max Verstappen, and this should now be a straight fight to the end of the race. I think on hard tyres, 33 laps into 52. 19 to go then, both on the hard tyres to the end of the Grand Prix. This is it, straight fight. Bottas in the mighty Mercedes against Verstappen, who's been so good on that hard tyre already. Didn't like the medium tyres, used it for what? eight laps and got straight back off it again. That's why the engineer was saying flat out, give her what you've got, and then we'll pit. So they've covered off Valtteri Bottas. What can Lewis Hamilton do? Back into the race lead now. He can go a bit longer if he can. 
This is a story all about qualifying, isn't it? Verstappen's decision to qualify on the hards has put him where he is, but also Valtteri Bottas taking that pole position has given him first choice on strategy. Lewis Hamilton, he's kind of in no man's land now. Let's hear from him. There's something wrong with the car to make the left rear do that. He's not a happy man. That's him complaining about his car. He's been doing it all race long, but he's in first place at the moment, but yet to make what we assume will be another stop, which will drop him back down the order. He's got nothing. He's not got the pace. He's worried about the car. He's not happy, but he's also not got the opportunity to take on his teammate, let alone Max Verstappen. Well, he's just done his best lap of the Grand Prix on the last lap. The tyre's looking daggy as ever, the left rear, but Hamilton continues, doesn't pit on this lap, doesn't respond to Bottas and Verstappen pitting on the last lap. He's just got to keep going into the race now and try and build some sort of tyre advantage for later on. Maybe even a safety car will give him a chance at a cheap pit stop to fight them later on, but he's not happy. He hasn't been happy all afternoon, really, Lewis Hamilton. Not good on those tyres. And uh, the sound of the Mercedes man coming down the Wellington Strait with an 11 second gap in the race lead. He doesn't have to pit again if he can do 18 more <laughs> laps, but those tyres look like they need to come off the car seat. I would imagine he's been shaken to bits in the cockpit. The vibrations coming off that left rear must be enormous as Sebastian Vettel pulls out of that battle in the midfield and into the pit lane for his stop as well. In he goes. The red Ferrari pulling in. He's on the hard tyres right now. I would fully imagine it'll switch to another set of those, having already used the mediums, I think, at the start of the race. Uh, no, it's mediums going on. So he went hard, hard, and now he goes for the mediums. That'll be, presumably, they would hope, his last pit stop of this race. 34 laps into a 52-lap race. Decent stop for Ferrari, two and a half seconds. Where will he end up when he comes out? It's going to be a long final stint for him on a tyre that no one's wanted to drive on all Grand Prix long. But Vettel, he's had a bit of a Grand Prix of woe. Doesn't sound like he's at all happy with his Ferrari team these days either. But he's rejoined the circuit down in 14th place. So a bit of a way to get into the points, but we've still got some more people to make a pit stop as well. OK, then, 35 laps in, 52 is the total. And it's Lewis Hamilton who leads the race. Here he is. On the last set of tyres, is it real okay to keep going? So there's still rubber, rubber remaining, apart from the blistered section. Really interesting messages between Lewis Hamilton and his engineer. It's all talk about tyres, of course. He's talking about the last set before his pit stop. What was the condition of them? He still had a little bit of rubber left. We saw last weekend they literally ran out of rubber and the tyre well, it exploded on the final lap. At the moment, though, Hamilton 11 seconds out in front, but his tyres, they don't look good. Could he possibly eke this out to the end? Difficult to imagine. 17 laps to go. The tyres look horrible. We know what happened last week with them, and uh, if he's going to have to limp around on three wheels, it'll cost him a lot more this week because he's got Max Verstappen just 11 seconds back. Then it's two seconds to Bottas and just two more seconds to Charles Leclerc, who's only made one pit stop but he's having a really, really good drive, the Ferrari man. Fifth and sixth, still the racing points. Nico Hülkenberg just ahead of Lance Stroll, as they've been all race long. Then there's a nice battle for seventh. Kvyat has got past Ocon, who's now ahead of Alex Albon, and Daniel Ricciardo rounds out the top ten, having had that spin. Carlos Sainz has been back into the pit lane in the McLaren. Much better stop, still not lightning quick. Three seconds this time, but no such problems with the unsafe release like they had last time. Uh, Hamilton... 13 seconds, 13 and a half seconds ahead of his teammate. Of course, Hamilton first, his teammate Bottas in third with Verstappen sandwiched in the middle. The gap between Verstappen and Bottas remaining relatively stable. Perhaps Verstappen just pulling out a little bit. But we're not seeing the pace differential at this stage in the race that we were in the early part. They're both just measuring their pace now. Just 16 laps to go. Hamilton still leading by 11 seconds. Again, didn't choose to pit. With every passing lap, it looks like he might try and go to the end on a tyre that really looks very bad. Alex Albert sweeps around the outside of Esteban Ocon at uh, Stowe Corner, that one. And that's a move from Albon up into eighth place. So many moves around the outside in the Red Bull that's working very nicely today. And Albon back up to eighth, which will be seventh as Daniel Kipiat pits in the Alpha Tauri. But yeah, with every lap that passes, Hamilton still with an 11 second gap might just think, you know what, let's give it a go. If I pit, I probably can't do much about the two in front either, uh, anyway. Verstappen and Bottas just measuring their pace and not really much quicker than Hamilton, just a couple of tenths on the last lap. 
Uh, you're hearing in the background uh, a replay of Lando Norris putting a move on Daniel Ricciardo, I think. The problem that they have out front right now is Verstappen needs to start putting Lewis under pressure to try and force him into that pit stop. But if he does so, he starts to compromise his own tyres. So what do you do? If you're Max Verstappen, I think you've got to go for it. I think Max Verstappen, that's the only way he works anyway. If you're Lewis Hamilton, the engineers are desperately measuring the tyres. The tyre's not going to blow it though, right? <laughs> yeah, we think it's safe. It's just the blistering that's costing the pace. Well, let's hope that that is not a message that comes back to haunt them. Questions about Hamilton's tyres. Hamilton's tyres, they're blistered, they don't look good, but can they hang on to the end of this race? He ticks through to complete lap 36 of 52. The lap count keeps ticking down, and the gap that Hamilton has to Verstappen remains at 11 seconds. Verstappen just one tenth quicker than Hamilton. Bottas running the same pace as Verstappen. Leclerc running the same pace as Verstappen. The Red Bull, the Mercedes and the Ferrari all separated two seconds apiece. And right now, Hamilton is matching them for pace. So whilst he's matching them, he might as well stay out and see what happens. Of course, if there's a safety car, he'll come right back into play as well. So it's working out OK for him right now. But I do just feel that probably Verstappen and Bottas, particularly just behind, are measuring their pace. And when they do give it some in a bit, they should catch Hamilton quite quickly because Hamilton's tyres do look bad. Mercedes recognised that by saying that blistering is costing us pace, but Verstappen not pushing yet. Basically, Max, we've got the pace if we need to react, so we just need to ensure we've got the tyres when we need it. Exactly that. There we go. <laughs> Verstappen measuring the pace. They're comfortable with the gap to Hamilton. They think they can catch him pretty quickly. So they're just, just treading water right now. Don't want to use the tyres too much to put themselves under pressure from Bottas, who's just two seconds back. If they can keep this gap, Hamilton to Verstappen at about 11 seconds, Hamilton has a chance if there was a safety car because it's a 19-second pit stop if you come in. Uh, that's the duration. You get half of that off if there's a safety car. So if it happened to fall correctly for him and he could get in right now, pit and get back out again, my word, it would be a battle to see who could win this race between the three drivers, Hamilton, Verstappen and Bottas. We're set up for a blistering finish. Uh, well, no pun intended there. Um, I actually think that if we end up with that kind of situation, if we end up with all three cars battling it out to the end, my money's on Verstappen, which I never would have said before the start of this motor race. Verstappen looks like he has the quicker car genuinely on pace. He's holding some back right now, nursing his car through, and when he needs it, as we just heard, they can unleash it. Critically, the Red Bull seems to be kinder on its tyres than the Mercedes. We've seen it a couple of times last year as well, where Verstappen could do long stints and ends up in a very good position at the end of a Grand Prix. We saw it in Austria, we saw it in Brazil as well. And now we seem to be seeing it this afternoon. The softer tyres that Pirelli have bought, the slightly higher temperatures than last week as well. It's all favoured Max Verstappen, combined with that starting tyre he was on as well. Started on the hard, which gave him a great run at the start and put himself in this position where he's favourite for the race at this point. Ten seconds behind Hamilton, ten and a half seconds. He's just eked another couple of tenths into Hamilton's lead. But I think soon, Red Bull are going to have to kick on and give Max the message, go and get Lewis for the win. Yeah, it feels like a fitting tribute to 70 years of Formula One that we've got an absolute scorcher of a race today. We are 39 laps into a 52-lap race here at Silverstone. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live, and it's Jolien Palmer, myself, and Jenny Gao taking you through this 70th anniversary Grand Prix in which Lewis Hamilton currently leads, but... We don't necessarily think he's favourite. Verstappen in the Red Bull is second, ten and a half seconds back, but crucially with a faster car. Hamilton has made one less pit stop, and we think, although this is the big question, we think he might have to pit again, or could he just hold on, eking out the tyres that he's on to get to the end of 52 laps? We're all waiting to find out. Could be a thrilling finale. 13 to go. Alex Albers just on the fastest lap in the Red Bull in seventh position. He's got 15 seconds to catch the two racing points now. Stroll still within two seconds of Nico Hülkenberg, who must be starting to fatigue in the neck department about now, <laughs> having not raced for eight months, but running a good fifth. Behind Charles Leclerc, who's driving really well in the Ferrari, and he's only made one pit stop Leclerc, still running good pace, keeping the tyres alive, running right with Bottas and Verstappen. And there's a really interesting battle with the other Ferrari as well. Uh, not necessarily very far up the grid, but Sebastian Vettel very close to Pierre Gasly and Carlos Sainz. And that battle has just pushed Sebastian Vettel well off the racetrack. Uh, he went way over the white line with all four tyres and back on on lap 38. Uh, that's a battle at the moment for 11th position. 
Vettel pushed himself well off the track down at Stowe. Didn't seem to care too much about keeping it within the confines of the circuit, but that'll just be a warning for him for that one. I haven't seen him do it too many times. Looking back at these tyres, Lewis Hamilton then, 12 laps to go, still ticking along. The pace isn't dropping for him. The gap now is dropping slightly. Four tenths on the last lap, Verstappen was quicker. 12 laps to go, 10 seconds the gap. The math said right now Hamilton's hanging on to it, but we think Verstappen can raise his pace and catch Lewis Hamilton before the end if they need to. Red Bull think that as well. They told Max over the radio, we've got the pace in hand if we need it. Right now he's measuring it, but he's just pulled out a three second gap to Valtteri Bottas in third, who's now being reeled in slightly by Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. He's just had his personal best lap of the race, half a second quicker than Bottas and Hamilton. And he's only a second and a half away from Bottas. The best way I can describe this is unpredictable, Jenny. Yeah, and just having a listen to Valtteri Bottas's radio, and he was asking about the state of the tyres that they'd already taken off, the last set of hard tyres, and actually there was a lot of rubber left, even though they were blistering up. 60% on the front and 80% on the backs still remaining. So whether they came in too early because of that blistering and thought they didn't have enough left, but they're learning from those tyres, and it looks like they're leaving Hamilton out because they've got that information now. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, let's not forget, though, what happened last week. You know, Jolien just said, he looks, looks like he's hanging on. Lap times look good, but that's exactly what happened last week. Lewis Hamilton's comments were the pace was still there, the tyre was hanging on, he got almost no warning before eventually it let go on the final lap of the race. The gap now is coming down. Max Verstappen does his best lap of the race. 1.2 seconds quicker than Lewis Hamilton. So here we go, and here's going to be the radio message. OK, let's try to close the gap to Hamilton now, Max, please. Start pushing. Uh, reduce the gap to Lewis. Just covering the small chance that he tries to go to the end. Red Bull don't fancy Hamilton is going to the end then. And now that uh, they've shown a bit of pace, Hamilton might think twice about it. Eight and a half seconds the gap, and that's going to come down and down. And if Hamilton doesn't pit again, he might find himself off the podium. He might find himself off the podium either way because of Charles Leclerc's great drive here. Still just a second and a half behind Valtteri Bottas. 14 seconds, just under 14 seconds away from Lewis Hamilton. So if Hamilton pits again, he's going to emerge in fourth and have to do some overtaking for even a podium today. And if he doesn't pit again, A, will his tyres even make the distance? And B, will they degrade so much that not only Verstappen can pass him, but Bottas and Charles Leclerc can get him? This is coming alive with, uh, what, 11 laps to go. Verstappen has seven and a half seconds to make up to, uh, to Lewis Hamilton, which he's doing. And here come the pit crew out into the pit lane for Mercedes. That has to be for Hamilton. In he comes. Rear tyres with horrible blisters all over the back. Locks his brakes on his way into the pit lane. He'll pull into the pits. The guys will make a very quick change. Let's see what he goes on to. With just a few laps to go, he could up for a softer tyre. No, it's the hard tyre going on. It's the only one that will really even do 10 laps of racing pace, though. So uh, Merck switching hard to hard, which unleashes Verstappen into the race lead with 10 laps to go. Four seconds ahead of Valtteri Bottas, six seconds ahead of Charles Leclerc, and then Lewis Hamilton re-emerges after a 2.7 second pit stop into loads of clear air. He's not even close to Charles Leclerc right now. He's got about seven seconds to make up to the Ferrari man for a podium. It's not worked out at all for him. And I'll tell you what, the way he came into the pit lane that time, I wonder if he got the car slowed down enough to not speed in the pits. He came in all smoked up on the front, super late. Oh, that's very late. I'll tell you what, it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't stop the car in time. I think they're, they're yeah, you're absolutely right. He locked up way beyond the line, which often means you could well be going faster than the pit lane speed limit at the point you cross the centre. I think he might have slowed down enough after he crossed just to bring the average speed <laughs> down a bit. It's going to be nip and tuck for Hamilton, that one. Very, very smoky pit lane entry. Probably thought the race was going to be a lot closer than it was out of the pits, but he's come out. 12 and a half seconds away from Verstappen. 10 seconds clear of Nico Hülkenberg in a fourth place with 10 laps to go now. What pace has he got? Finally, he may not have to worry about the tyres to the end of the race. Well, is Leclerc going to be able to hang on without another stop? He's currently sitting in third in Ferrari. Six seconds back from Verstappen, two seconds back from Bottas, who's currently in second. This is Verstappen's race to lose now. It's a straight fight to the end. And crucially, he genuinely has a faster car with 10 laps to go. Alex Albon's proving that right now. Now, another fastest lap for Albon in seventh place. Fastest man out on, out on track. 
the teammate of Max Verstappen, who needs the Grand Prix by four seconds. This is looking better and better for Verstappen and Red Bull. Bottas doesn't look like he's got anything to offer. They've both been on these hard tyres for 10 laps. Leclerc behind has been on the hard tyres for 24 laps. But I reckon he's going to try and go to the end and cling on to an unlikely podium. But uh, Hamilton's got some, got some work to do. Verstappen right now surely has the race in his pocket. Well, what a race this is turning out to be at the 70th anniversary race for Formula One, and it has not let anybody down. I suppose the big question, Jolie, is where has the pace of that Mercedes gone? Just a week ago, nobody could get anywhere near them. We're at the same circuit, perhaps slightly different conditions, one steps off from the tyres, but is it as simple as that? They're just chewing up the tyres far too quickly. They can't unleash the pace of their car, because when they do, the tyres turn to goo and they can't use them for more than a couple of laps. So Bottas second, four and a half seconds away from Verstappen. Hamilton is now flying on this set of hard tyres. This is now where we'll see what Mercedes can do when they don't have to worry about the pace. Ten laps of Hamilton on hard tyres to catch Leclerc, which he should do because he's just done the fastest first sector of anyone, the fastest second sector of anyone in the race as well. And he's about to pump in the fastest lap of the Grand Prix if he gets through the third sector OK as well. And he's now just two seconds away from Leclerc. So this is about to be a very quick lap from Hamilton. If he can catch Leclerc, can he catch Bottas? Well, that is the question, isn't it? And that is the, that's the question that's really going to be a, a crucial part of this championship battle. Bottas needs to stay in front of him. 28.4 for Lewis Hamilton. It's a rapid lap that is nearly three seconds quicker than Leclerc. Leclerc last lap, 1 minute 31.1. Hamilton's 2.2 seconds quicker than Bottas as well on the last lap, and he's just passed some traffic. I tell you what, with a bit between his teeth, you can see the Ferrari man him. just in front now. Right this is going to be this is going to be easy pickings for Lewis Hamilton to get third. He's only 4.7 seconds away from Valtteri Bottas. That's where the interesting battle, I think, is going to come between the two Mercedes because the gloves will be off, and Hamilton probably has the faster car on those fresher tyres. Hamilton versus Bottas could be the last couple of laps. He's definitely got the better tire, the, the better car right now on the new tyres. He's one second away from Charles Leclerc. He's got to try and just dispatch of the Ferrari man as quickly as possible. They flash into Maggots and Beckett's and it's just visibly coming down the gap every corner. It's just half a second now as Hamilton eats in corner by corner to Leclerc. And now he opens the DRS on the hangar straight. He might pass him straight away here. Yeah, closing speed then. Here he comes, Lewis Hamilton. Not enough on this occasion as they turn into Stowe, but he knows he's got the pace. In they go then. Coming to the Vale chicane, the last part of the lap. There won't be anything doing here. This is a slow, twisty part of the circuit, but then they'll come back onto the start-finish straight. And perhaps Lewis Hamilton can blitz through there with DRS again. Personal best lap of the race for Verstappen out front. Five seconds to Valtteri Bottas, who's also done a personal best lap of the race. So Bottas has responded to Hamilton's pace. He's still 1.3 seconds away from the lap that Hamilton just did. It could still get funky between the Mercedes, but first of all, Hamilton must clear Leclerc. Coming through turns three and four, he may have a chance now, but I think Leclerc's going to get DRS from the back marker ahead. So Bottas will be desperately hoping that Lewis is held up for more and more laps behind Leclerc. Lewis needs to get past quickly. Jenny? Yeah, and Leclerc, listening to his radio, he's been told that he needs to save tyres. He's aiming for a target lap of 1 minute 31.6. That's what Ferrari are telling him. That's going to help Hamilton. It is, and here he comes. Onto the straight again. This is past the old pit straight. The old pit buildings on the right-hand side. Lewis Hamilton closing again, still not quite enough as they turn flat out into cops and go through a really high-speed section of the circuit. He's got so much grip. Didn't even need to use as much road through cops as Leclerc. Little blend out of the throttle, but he's so tucked under the rear wing of the Ferrari that this should be easy. As he gets on the throttle, out of Beckett's, opens the DRS. This should be like taking candy from a baby. Yeah, here he goes then, right underneath the rear wing of the Ferrari. Oh, Leclerc moves to the right-hand side. Hamilton pulls to the inside. Just enough space, and through he goes. That was close. A little defensive twitch from Charles Leclerc, but Lewis Hamilton's dispatched him. His next target, his teammate, Valtteri Bottas. Bottas will have already had the message some laps ago that Lewis is on a charge. He's already tried to respond a little bit. But there is still about five seconds between the two Mercedes and another five seconds ahead of Bottas to Verstappen in front. I think I had to cover my eyes for that move <laughs> for Lewis Hamilton. Leclerc reacted kind of in a Grosjean-esque way, quite yeah. late to uh, Hamilton. When Hamilton went to the inside, Leclerc was just ushering him to the inside, just about gave a car's width. 
but then tried to stay around the outside of Stowe. In fact, Leclerc probably moved a bit earlier than Grosjean, but was just going the same direction as Hamilton. The closing speed was huge, but Hamilton makes it stick. Not much to choose between the two through the apex, barely a paper's width between the Ferrari and the Mercedes, but Hamilton makes the move. Four and a half seconds to Bottas, six laps to go. Kevin Magnussen back in the garage in the Haas, retired from this race. We don't yet know why, but he was struggling anyway, but that is his race over. Uh, Kevin Magnussen and the Haas retired from the race. The first one to drop out of this 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Interestingly, Nico Hulkenberg took a pit stop on the last lap, went for a soft tire, a third pit stop of the Grand Prix for Hulkenberg. He was running in fifth place. And I think that's Racing Point responding to Alex Albon closing in on uh, the two of them. Stroll's just done a personal best lap in fifth now, and I don't think he is going to pit. I think he's going to try and fend off Albon on track. But Hockerberg with a very late pit stop. Let's just drop him down to seven. A soft tyre with five laps to go seems even optimistic. Five laps at this sort of uh, pace. A tough call for that soft tyre? Could be. They weren't lasting very long in practice, but Hockerberg's got quite a margin he's still got eight seconds back to Ocon and has a new tire on Ocon running in eighth one pit stop to his name as well running a similar strategy to uh, to Charles Leclerc and he's got Lando Norris breathing down his neck now within a second Jenny Gale yeah, the tyres a lot lighter than when they started this race because all that fuel has been eaten up by them. It means they're just a little bit easier on their tyres. Uh, on Friday practice, you managed to get about 12 laps out of a soft tyre, so Hulkenberg can do this if he's sensible. Well, Bottas coming up amongst traffic at the moment and struggling a little bit through that part of the lap. Here he goes past the back marker of Latifi. This is going to get really juicy between the two Mercedes in the closing stages. Verstappen is looking like he's got this one in the bag. Personal best lap of the race again. The gap now six and a half seconds to Valtteri Bottas with five laps to go. Hamilton on the last lap, one and a half seconds quicker than Bottas. The gap between the two Mercedes is just three and a half seconds. Latifi held up Bottas through Brooklyn, and I don't know if he's going to hold up Lewis Hamilton at all. But if Hamilton can clear him quickly, he's got five laps now, just four laps coming up to try and catch his teammate, who he can now see ahead, Latifi Pitts. That's great news for Hamilton. We're going to have a Mercedes showdown, albeit for second place. Well, I wonder, I just wonder how much Verstappen has in the bag. How comfortable is he if uh, Lewis Hamilton can get past Valtteri Bottas? Is there a chance he could put Verstappen under pressure? Or is Verstappen sitting on a bit of pace in his back pocket that he could unleash if he needs it? We're going to find out very soon because it's now Verstappen out front. Seven seconds, in fact, decent gap. Seven seconds over Bottas. But Hamilton closing quickly on the sister Mercedes. 1.7 seconds the gap. Hamilton's going to reel in Bottas. And uh, Verstappen's safe. I think Verstappen's got enough pace and he's got enough gap to keep Hamilton behind. But going longer has really helped Hamilton. You're free to race. Just give each other space. <laughs> That's the Mercedes pit wall saying, yeah, go for it, boys. But if you hit each other, you are in serious trouble. Here we go. Four and a half <laughs> laps to go. They come into Cops Corner. And Hamilton was half a second quick, quicker in the first sector alone. He's got so much pace in the car because he's pitted way later, is on better tyres. He should be able to pass Valtteri Bottas, his teammate in the same car, but on much older tyres. Hamilton could pass Bottas here for second. I'll tell you what, when he looks down the length of the hangar straight, he'll see the race leader, Max Verstappen, as well. But I still think Verstappen's got enough in hand to win the Grand Prix. It could get fiery here, though, between the Mercedes. Just one second separates them. It should get fiery, because if Valtteri Bottas has any designs on winning a championship this year, this is where it really will start. He's got to keep Lewis Hamilton behind him, and that is going to mean getting very aggressive, given that Lewis has just more pace in that car. You are free to race. You just need to keep it clean. So, same message for Hamilton, then. The gloves are off. Off you go. Stay away from each other but you are free to race with three laps to go. This is an absolutely nail-biting finish. It's Verstappen out front, leading this race on genuine pace. He hasn't lucked into that position. He's had a faster car and a better strategy. 7.7 .7 seconds ahead of Valtteri Bottas, who has his teammate, Lewis Verstappen, breathing down his neck with just a couple of laps to go. Hamilton right underneath the rear wing of Valtteri Bottas. Half a second separating the two Mercedes now as they exit Luffield. Bottas has got to use everything he's got now. Remember, these two, the championship protagonists. Verstappen surely will not win the championship this year in the Red Bull. The Mercedes car is better, just not today. It's been too hard on the tyres, and Verstappen now eight seconds clear. 
has got this Grand Prix victory in his sights, but Hamilton is swarming underneath the rear wing of Bottas. They come through Maggots, come through Beckett. Here he'll get the DRS, and what can he do down the hangar straight? Well, this is where Lewis is so good when he's chasing. Here he comes, closing, DRS, down the hangar straight, pulls out, but no, thinks better of it as they turn into the fast right-hander. He can't make it happen there, but he's still right underneath the rear wing of Bottas. Another jink out to the right-hand side. They are right next to each other. Bottas defends well, though, and they are still Bottas in front of Hamilton. Bottas is in trouble, though. He defended at Stowe, just defended slightly at club as well, and Hamilton's going to have to blend out of the throttle at Abbey. He's so close behind his teammate. Can he lunge it up the inside of turn three, the first breaking zone of Village? No. Bottas defends again. Will he defend again at turn four? he'll have to because Hamilton is going for the outside and now surely he's going to get the run on the exit. Wheel to wheel they go then. This is as close as I've seen it for many years. Here he goes then. Hamilton down the Wellington straight. DRS open. Sails up the outside of Bottas. He can't defend. There's nothing left in that second uh, 77 Mercedes. Hamilton now in front of Bottas. Second in the race. Is there any way he could possibly put Verstappen under pressure? Eight seconds up the road is Verstappen. It's looking like his race. Hamilton swept around the outside of Brooklands. He, the move was kind of done on the straight. He was so much quicker through all the preceding corners, slightly ahead on the outside, on the racing line into Brooklands, and then just was able to break deeper as well than his teammate. Bottas really no tyres left for which to defend. And he's just seen the championship leader come past. Can Hamilton catch Verstappen? Surely not. Nine seconds, Verstappen leads. The Red Bull pit will, will be slightly twitchy with a couple of laps to go, but four and a half seconds per lap does not seem doable in a normal race. Albon's passed Lance Stroll for fifth position, so Red Bull have more to smile about. Big Hamilton slide. rally crosses it through club corner. He's giving it everything. He's just passed Bottas for second, but the race win is surely too far. Although I say surely, remember what happened last week. <laughs> I was just going to say, still big blister marks all over the back end of Lewis Hamilton's car, and sliding it through there will not have helped. Verstappen in a bit of a clear air at the moment. He's just uh, lapped his former teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. He's looking good for the victory here, but can Lewis do anything about it at all? Alex Albon is the king of Cops Corner today. Another move around the outside of Lance Stroll. He's made three or four of them today, all nice and clean through a seriously fast corner. He was fairly alongside Stroll, who's struggling on the tyres, and made that through. So up into fifth, and more good points for uh, for Red Bull. Leclerc looks like he's going to go to the end in fourth place, though, and that's a great drive for Ferrari. Vettel down in 12th and struggling, been in the wars all day. But uh, Leclerc again, bringing home the bacon for the, uh, for the Italian team. Yeah, another decent drive with a difficult car, that Ferrari. Uh, but Leclerc definitely getting a lot more out of it than his four-time world champion teammate Sebastian Vettel right now. Uh, Hülkenberg sitting in seventh, started, of course, third. That dream of an F1 podium still slightly elusive. Uh, Stroll is in sixth ahead of him, but a decent result if it stays that way for the two racing points. Albon is fifth, Leclerc fourth, Bottas third, Hamilton second. And Max Verstappen has started his final lap. Did you hydrate during the race? <laughs> you must have some sweaty hands as well, so I don't forget to sanitize. <laughs> Ever the Joker. That is unbelievable. You save the jokes for after the checkered flag, Max. He's Still 18 corners lap. to go. Let's not get cocky. Remember what happened last week. Anything can happen in Formula One. Just keep the banter back for another minute and a half. I'm pleased to see his call, but uh, unbelievable. He is on the brink of winning a Grand Prix and still got time to joke with his pit wall. Here he comes then, Max Verstappen, all on his own. The pressure didn't quite materialise from Hamilton. He's still nearly 10 seconds back. Verstappen coming towards the latter stages, through the middle part of the lap, past the old pits, along the straight towards Cops. He'll turn in. He won't need to be absolutely flat out this time, just looking after the car, just looking after the tyres, making sure he can get it home. Into the final sector he goes, then all on his own, Max Verstappen. Hamilton sitting in second, Bottas in third. They're not troubling each other anymore. They're certainly not troubling Max Verstappen. He comes towards the latter stages then, Max Verstappen, Coming through the Vale chicane at the moment, he'll come through Vale, he'll come through Club, he'll exit the final corner, and he'll come onto the start finish straight. Then here he goes, breaking heavily for the right hander, chucks it in, left hander, right hander, out of Club, onto the start finish straight, 
And it's Max Verstappen, the unlikely winner of Formula One's 70th anniversary Grand Prix in the Red Bull. What a drive, what a race. Lewis Hamilton brings it in in second in the Mercedes with his teammate Valtteri Bottas in the sister Mercedes coming home third. Well, Jody, that is not the result that we thought we were going to get, but what a race. What a race it was. Great race. Who saw that coming? I certainly didn't. From fourth on the grid, Max Verstappen wins the Grand Prix. Mark Priesty, you saw that coming. You made that <laughs> prediction free Grand Prix, but I think even you must be surprised with that one. <laughs> Hamilton second. We saw a nice fight between the two Mercedes, and Hamilton gets the fastest lap as well, that one point that goes with it. But Max Verstappen, he just has some days where he's on another planet. And today, the Red Bull car with Max Verstappen at the wheel was just brilliant. The thing with that race, that was Max Verstappen's ninth win. That was a master stroke of strategy executed perfectly by Max. It all started on Saturday. Here he is, let's hear from him. There you go, mate. You delivered. Nice job. Just quicker today. <laughs> oh, guys, what an amazing race. Oh, thank you so much. Also, everyone. Back at the factory, this is what you get when you know you keep pushing. <laughs> what a great day! Also, thank you to Honda. We, I think we did everything perfect today. So uh, yeah, we're definitely going to celebrate this one. Unbelievable way, race, Matt. Unbelievable. You, that was, that was fully sanitized. That was amazing. An amazing, amazing performance. Well done. Well, they're absolutely justified in feeling that overjoyed. It started on Saturday when they made a different strategic decision in qualifying to everybody else, and today it absolutely worked a treat. They beat the Mercedes, a car that we know is quicker, but not today, not on these tyres, not in these conditions, and certainly not in the hands of Max Verstappen, that Red Bull dominating the race. Let's run you through it then. It's Verstappen who takes his ninth win. Uh, winning this 70th anniversary Grand Prix. It's the championship leader, Lewis Hamilton, in second. His teammate, Valtteri Bottas, in third. Charles Leclerc with a decent race to get that Ferrari up to fourth place again. Great effort, guys. It wasn't our day, but, uh, yeah, let's have a look into to that. But grateful for points. Difficult afternoon for Lewis Hamilton, just didn't have the pace, second he was on the road, as I say, but crucially, in, uh, in front of his teammate Bottas, Leclerc fourth, as I said, Alex Albon, the sister Red Bull, in fifth, uh, Lance Stroll in sixth with his teammate stand-in, Nico Hülkenberg, in seventh, uh, Esteban Ocon was eighth, Lando Norris ninth, Danny Kvyat was tenth, taking the final point, Pierre Gasly eleventh, Sebastian Vettel twelfth, Carlos Sainz, then Daniel Ricciardo, Kimi Raikkonen in fifteenth, Grosjean 16th, Giovinazzi was 17th, George Russell in the Williams 18th, Latifi was 19th and the one retirement from this race, Kevin Magnussen. B4, B4, slow back. Yes, sir! Ah, yes! Blood C, baby! Oh, yes! I'm so happy, so happy. And he should be happy, because that is a car that, perhaps on pace, you would not say deserves a fourth place, but he's dragged it up there, executed the strategy very, very well, and just rightly so, should be very, very happy about that. A man that's doing great things with a difficult car right now. Jenny Gow. Congratulations to Max Verstappen, winning his first race of 2020. And what is a condensed season? He just pulls his car into Park Ferme near the podium. And just to let you know, Hamilton got fastest lap. So by my mathematics, which is always sketchy, he's on 107 points leading the championship. Verstappen moves into second place on 77 points. Ironically, Bottas's number. And Bottas moves back to 73 as Verstappen gets on his car, pumps his fists in the air. He is the winner of the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Yes, and what a race it was. I think a fitting tribute to Formula One's 70 years. It did not disappoint. It had drama and excitement. In fact, this weekend's had drama and excitement right from the get-go with controversies both on and off track. But today, it was all about the racing. It was all about the cars and the drivers, and nobody let us down. We had everything. The final couple of laps, it came alive, but it was Max Verstappen who ultimately came out on top. We're watching pictures of the two Mercedes drivers just comparing their rear tyres. Not happy all the way through that race, particularly Lewis Hamilton, but they got onto the end and actually a decent, decent haul of points in the end for Mercedes. The contrast of emotions is stark. Verstappen leaps into his mechanics. They're absolutely charged.